Okay, in this lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving quadratic equations by completing the square and the square root method. Uh, in this particular lesson, unlike the previous one, the squares will not be completed. Uh, as we saw in the previous lesson, uh, the vertex, or in other words, the completed square form of a quadratic equation is a times x minus p squared plus q is equal to zero. Uh, to solve a quadratic equation using the square root method, the variable must be uniquely, there must not be more than one variable, uh, uniquely contained within a perfect square. Uh, so in other words, if you look at the two examples below, uh, what you'll see in the first one is that the variable is uniquely contained within a perfect square, whereas, uh, so that can be solved using the square root method, whereas 2x squared minus 16x plus 17 can't be because the variable is not only contained within a perfect square, it's also on its lonesome here in the linear term. Uh, so what we'll be focusing on is in order to do that, we have to complete the square. So before we can use the square root method, we need to complete the square. Uh, finally, to solve quadratic equations of the vertex form or of the completed square form of the form a times x minus p squared plus q is equal to zero, uh, one of the goals is to isolate the perfect square, as we saw in the previous lesson, uh, and then take plus or minus the square root of both sides. Uh, so if you look at this first example here, we're going to do two of them uh, and then a third one as well. Uh, it says solve by completing the square and the square root method. Express your answers as exact roots in simplest form. Uh, so in these, both of these, uh, the variable is not uniquely contained within a perfect square. So in order to do that, we're going to have to complete the square. Uh, so in this first example, uh, let me start completing the square. We have x squared plus 8x. We'll need to add and subtract 16. And the other thing that always needs to be the case is we need to uh, make this equation equal 0, which is the case in this first example anyways. Uh, so the completed square here is 1 times x plus 4 squared minus 27 is equal to 0. Uh, now what we need to do, this is now a completed square. Uh, we need to use the square root method in order to solve for x. So if I add 27, I will have 1 times x plus 4 squared uh, equals 27. I can divide by 1, which won't even matter. Uh, so at this point, I have x plus 4 squared is equal to 27. And then, since I have the perfect square isolated, I take plus or minus the square root in order to leave it with x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 27. Uh, in this particular case, it says express your answers as exact roots. Uh, so we are not going to take the square root of 27 and make it into decimal form. So my last step is to subtract 4. And my solution for x is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 27. Okay, the 4 stays outside. Uh, finally, if we want to put this into simplest form, uh, 27 is, if we do a factor tree, is 3 times 3 times 3. So we could take out a pair of 3s as a single 3. So square root 27 can also be written as 3 root 3. Uh, so the simplest form would be x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 3 root 3. Okay, in this next example, uh, the first thing is to notice that we don't have one side equal to zero. So before we do that, let's before we do anything, let's put this into standard form. Uh, in this particular case, we will not be allowed to use decimals because it says to use exact roots in simplest form. Uh, so my first step is to divide two out. We need to complete the square at this point in time. Uh, and this particular problem is going to get quite complex uh, because we have to deal with fractions. So the, the value that we're going to add and subtract inside the brackets is half of negative 3 halves squared. So I'll show that over here. Uh, half of negative 3 halves is equal to negative 3 quarters. And if I square that, I will get 9 sixteenths. Negative 3 times negative 3 is uh, 9, and 4 times 4 is 16. So add and subtract 9 sixteenths. Uh, next, what we need to do is in order to remove the negative 9 sixteenths from the brackets, uh, we have to multiply it by 2. So negative 9 sixteenths times 2 over 1 is equal to 
negative 18 sixteenths, or if I reduce that, negative 9 eighths. Uh, so I have 2 bracket x squared minus 3 halves x plus 9 sixteenths minus 9 eighths minus 7. Uh, in order to add fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So I could represent negative uh, 7 as negative um, 56 eighths. So in this particular case, what we have is negative uh, 9 eighths minus 56 eighths. So that becomes negative 65 eighths. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, we're left with a completed square of 2 bracket x, and we already have calculated half of negative 3 halves. It's negative 3 quarters, so it'll be x minus 3 quarters squared uh, minus 65 eighths is all, again, I haven't listed this recently, but is all equal to 0. Uh, so what we're going to do now, we've got a completed square. The variable is uniquely contained. Now we can start... Uh, isolating that perfect square and taking plus or minus the square root. So uh, if I add 65 eighths to both sides, I will be left with 2 times x minus 3 quarters squared is equal to 65 eighths. And now what I can do is divide both sides by 2, the coefficient 2. I have x minus uh, 3 quarters squared is equal to, and let me just show you and remind you what this is, uh, 65 eighths divided by 2 is the same as 65 eighths times its reciprocal, uh, which is 65 sixteenths in this case. So this is equal to 65 sixteenths. Uh, the next step, and I'll start working up here, uh, is going to take plus or minus the square root of both sides. So if I take plus or minus the square root of both sides, I am left with uh, x minus 3 quarters is equal to plus or minus the square root of 65 sixteenths. And finally, before I start putting this in the simplest form, is adding 3 quarters. So I have x is equal to 3 quarters plus or minus the square root of 65 sixteenths. Now, 65 sixteenths, uh, the square root of 65 sixteenths, can also be represented as the square root of 65 over the square root of 16, which is equivalent to the square root of 65 over 4, because we're putting this into simplest form. So we're left with x is equal to, in simplest form, 3 quarters plus or minus uh, the square root of 65 over 4. And since both numerators have the same denominator, the simplest, simplest form is 3 plus or minus the square root of 65 all over the common denominator of 4. Uh, finally, in our last example, so that's solving using the completing square square root method uh, as exact roots in simplest form. Our last example is just going to be doing the same thing, uh, but with decimals. So what you may want to do is pause the video at this point in time and see if you can solve this problem by yourself. Uh, this one says solve and express your solution to the nearest tenth. So you may want to pause it, try it on your own, and see how it goes. Uh, okay, we already have it as equal to 0, so we're going to start completing the square. Uh, I should have 0 0.2 times x squared. 0.12 divided by 0.2 is going to be 0 0.6 minus 11 is equal to 0. Uh, in order to complete that square, we need to add and subtract 0 0.09, because that's half of 0.6 squared. And next, to remove the negative 0 0.09, we'll have 0 0.2 outside of x squared plus 0 0.6x plus 0 0.09 minus 0 0.018 minus 11 is equal to 0. Uh, so my completed square is 0 0.2 times x plus 0 0.3 squared minus 11.018 is equal to 0. And now we the variable is uniquely contained within the perfect square so we can start solving using the square root method so if i add 11.018 i'll be left with uh, 0 0.2 times x plus 0 0.3 squared is equal to 11.018 uh, divide by 0 0.2 and I will be left with x plus 0 0.3 squared is equal to 55.09. And now taking plus or minus, uh, since the perfect square has now been isolated, I will be left with x 
plus 0 0.3 is equivalent to uh, to the nearest tenth if I take the square root of 55.09 that is roughly 7.4 and now when I subtract 0 0.3 uh, I am left with x as a value of negative 0 0.3 plus or minus 7.4. So my two solutions here are negative 0 0.3 plus 7.4, which is equivalent to 7.1. And my other solution is negative 0 0.3 minus 7.4, which is negative 7.7. .7.